every now and then I've made the mistake of not continuing the recording in these little debriefs and missing like solid fucking gold that could be later used for a trailer or something. Oh you know? right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but how do you how do you feel about the how do you feel about the episode the interview? I think it was yeah, it was good. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I try to be like super cautious on on you know speculative stuff around the course, and yeah. maintaining you know like uh, a proper you know scientist perspective on it because it's it's, it's what I do you know yeah, and yeah. Um, it's hard for me to kind of like uh, indulge in, in it too much. I hope uh, that the way I appro- I I know that that can be the case. Some people are a little yeah. bit more open to it, some are less. I hope that the way that I approached the 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 subtle invitation oh you could if you wanted to was respectful of the situation that you're in yeah yeah this is perfectly you know super respectful and i okay. think you know like uh yeah what i mean about it is like i'm i'm i'm, I'm quite open to it but the thing is that I don't want to foster it further than it already is, <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if I say like, if I if I maintain an agnostic position sometimes very explicitly, and then speak about the possibilities, et cetera, et cetera, you kind of like feed the feed that game. And I think you know it's interesting, but I don't think it's like it's proper. It's not at the stage of like that you could say this is kind of like full on scientific proof that you know like. DMT is released in our brains when we die and when we are born and stuff like that. You know, I, th- I think there are interesting theories, but you know, we will, we're still lacking a lot of it. Um, and and people really like you know indulging in it quite a lot. And um, and you know, there's such a crazy thing around DMT that sometimes you know all these you know we're living in a simulation sort of stuff. Now it's the zeitgeist. In the yeah. 90s, it was yeah. all about aliens. Now it's all about simulation stuff. It's interesting stuff, but you know, like, uh... yeah, it's. Uh, I appreciate that on on some degree. I I could feel like because uh, me, I I I don't mind speculating, but obviously, because I'm, it's not of my professional. Uh, it's not. Yeah, I'm 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 an author. I'm not I'm not a scientist, right? So specula- speculation is is a part of my craft, I suppose. Yeah. But uh, to some degree, I find myself getting a little bit frustrated when the speculation becomes so full that it that it begins to lose correlation to what Bruce Damer calls the ground truth or starts mm. to it starts to just become very fanciful which is great fuck yeah give me some fanciful speculation but at the same time then it it, it becomes obsessions and i think it starts to starts to divorce people from from discovering really meaningful insight because we get so wrapped up into the possibilities of speculation on something that went that is now effectively so far from what we actually know that it almost has no value outside of entertainment at which point like kind of like yourself but maybe maybe slightly from a different point i don't really necessarily want to participate in that too much because i i feel like i've got more than enough entertainment coming out my wazoo in any given moment that my eyes are awake that i want something with a little bit more substance i guess yeah and i guess like i mean and what you say is kind of truth i mean there, there, there is a different position in terms of like people you know the way that science is delivered to people is something that has a huge effect you know it's like undeniably there's a power structure around science and there's a power structure on the knowledge that is given through science so speaking from a science perspective and indulging too much in the theories, you know, carries that risk, you know, you're kind of like bridging that information with this sort of like science value to it. So then it becomes kind of like, um, yeah, it, it kind of like it almost becomes beyond theory uh, or beyond speculation. And this is what happened to, you know. I think with Luke Strassman and his stuff, you know, he put his theories in the book and now like many people, you know, believe his theories are scientific truth. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, That, that's, uh, that is truly a dangerous, I think a dangerous situation for us to get into. I don't think that science is the end all and be all of of human experience, at at least not what's commonly practiced in science, which I see as, as a uh, physicalist reductionism. But if we start utilizing society's sort of foundation on hopefully foundation on on secular based science and fact stuff and we start distorting it a bunch and we call something science 
when it's actually just speculation divorced from any kind of science, then I think we're in a dangerous place because then we get things like flat earth theory and we get things like the hollow earth theory or right. any, any any number of possible things. I don't I haven't personally felt called to look too much into this discussion about this simulation theory. I understand actually as our perception making systems, like you said the psych like the I think you said something about the alpha wave something or other at the beginning as being like a filter. I understand that I'm not interacting with reality in its actual thing. I'm reacting I'm interacting with a representation of reality that's evolutionarily advantageous or has been to the organism that, you know, I'm interacting with frequency of light of quanta, you know, I'm not necessarily interacting with microphone and and whatever. Those are just interpretations, but whether or not we start to dial down into like, it's all a simulation that is being proposed by who, you know, and then all of a sudden the people who would call, um, call a Christian crazy are now saying that reality is a simulation made by higher dimensional alien intelligences. And I'm like, are you like, do you not see the correlation here? <laughs> like, uh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. I think it's, uh, I, I think, you know, like I, I, I agree. I mean, science is definitely not the only valid way to get to know the world. You know, mm-hmm. you can think mm-hmm. of, you know, philosophy, art, you know, being very valuable ways of have establishing this relationship with the world, you know, of course, like yeah. this, this idea of getting knowledge. Um, and I, and I, and my position in terms of, you know, I don't think you need to be a complete reductionist, uh, to participate in science. I think, um, Science, the value of science for me is just this disciplined way of getting to know the world. You know, there's there's just a discipline to it. There's a system to it that, in, in the end, is it's it's a very kind of like fruitful, um, nice way to go about it because science never assumes a final sort of truth to things. Knowledge is always progressing. You know, it's based on somebody coming up with somebody. Then somebody developing a hypothesis from that result, testing it, and then and so on and so on. So it's like knowledge progresses; it it's never stops. You know, we're always getting to know the world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And those and, uh, and the the reductionist research is extremely important. Like it was like we were talking about. The, you know the you know maybe it's DMT, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's actually a swash of them. And I think we. We need to have people who go in and their mentality is like, I'm going in, I'm bringing it down to the brass components, the undeniable brass components, and that's what I'm going in to get. Because that's an, I think that's an extremely important part of what's forwarding the human species right now. Um, not necessarily as the philosophy to approach all of life, but it's, it's like, like you were saying, the, the dynamic, like the dynamic of all these different approaches. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just looking. Yeah, you're, you're looking at it from different angles, and, and they all have their, you know, their richness and their, and their properties. But a critical eye is always, you know, important. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, totally it, agree. Just, totally yeah. agree. Discernment. I, I, I don't like the idea of like being a skeptic. I think skeptic is its own form of neuroses. But uh, a critical eye, I think, is is a uh, yeah, is very uh, important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, this is a sweet little after the credit. I recorded all of this. I don't know if you, I can let you listen to it and see if you want to save it, but I might release it later as something else be like the, you know, head over to my YouTube channel. Make sure you go and subscribe to get the after the credits <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Cool. Play it out. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite cool with it in general. So I'm saying. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, Chris, I will, I will let you go at this point though. And, um, go on let you go on with your day this episode this episode's going to come out probably near the end of the summer because this is a part of a stack because i'm going to be traveling so i can't really yeah. rely on internet and that stuff while i'm traveling but uh, i'll make sure that you get a heads up before it goes out um to share with your homies and whatever <laughs> okay cool man.